think I forgot something. Now we're ready. Welcome to worship and welcome to Advent. We are ready for this new church season that's all about waiting for the arrival of the most wonderful gift ever given, our Savior Jesus Christ. It's great to be with you. I'm Pastor Rockle and I'm at New Life Lutheran Church here in Bolingbrook, Illinois. If this is your first time worshiping us with us and a video special welcome to you, if we can be helpful to you, during your faith journey right now, we'd love to do so. Please connect with us on our website. And if you're returning for yet another worship video, thanks for coming back. It means so much to have you here. But like I said, it is Advent, which means a couple of different things in our worship service, but still it's gonna be scripture and prayer and some thinking about what does this season mean at this time and in this place. We hope it's meaningful for you, a time to recharge, uh, reconnect with God, and get ready for the week ahead and whatever it will bring. Now in a little bit, we will light the first candle on our Advent wreath since it's the first Sunday in Advent. I encourage you to find a candle or maybe you already have your Advent wreath out. You too can light your Advent wreath candle or a candle at home as a way to mark our journey through Advent in the next four weeks. So go ahead and go find a lighter, go find that candle so that you can participate as well. Are you ready to do life? Let's worship. Every moment of living is an opportunity to do something differently, to face the truth of our lives, to turn toward God with hope. 
Every confession of those things that lie in our hearts is a chance to come closer to God. Trusting in God's love and mercy, let us make our confession. Holy God, we aspire to love and trust you, but so often we get in the way of ourselves. We see only the deep sadness of the world and do not notice your people at work amid the sorrow. We assume that things will never get better and do not see all that is good right now. We close our eyes and complain about the darkness rather than see the light that shines all around us. Help us, Holy One. Help us to grow in love and trust, in compassion and hope, so that as the Christ child comes to us once again, we will see him and know him and rejoice. Amen. Friends in Christ, hear the good news. God could not love you any more than God already loves you right now. You are that beloved. And wrapped in that love is forgiveness and grace. Receive it, trust it, and then hear the call to share that same love, forgiveness, and grace with the world. Amen. Today's reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the reading. hearted among the privileged among the oppressed among the suffering our Savior is coming he is coming to bring new life so that the people will see the world will know with an eternal light, a peaceful word. Christ will come. Around us, without us. Within us, among us. In this place, in this time. Our Savior is coming. He is coming to bring new life. Today's Gospel reading comes from Mark, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 37. Jesus said, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory, then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Jesus continued, From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. 
But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at the cock crow or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to you all, keep awake. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. How do you like to wake up? Do you set an alarm? Do you set an alarm on your phone? And if so, have you carefully chosen the ringtone so that it, A, is either very jarring, so it makes you wake up and want to turn it off and get you moving? Or do you like something soft and melodic to kind of lull you into being awake after being asleep? Do you just know that a small child in your life will wake you up before you even want to, so there's no need to set an alarm? Or do you just wake up whenever you want to and take your waking slow and go into the day just as you want to, not as you have to? I do a mixture. Sometimes I set an alarm, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I can count on my kids to wake me up. Uh, usually my husband is up before I am, so uh, I generally just kind of go with the flow of the family, and I, I am usually not the first <laughs> one up. Um, I generally don't like waking up. I can feel groggy in the morning. Um, some people might say I'm in a bad mood in the morning. I don't know about that. Usually a cup of coffee really helps turn that mood around. Uh, but I, I know that... Um, People wake up differently, and some people can just like instantly snap awake and they don't feel tired and they're just ready to go, and others, it just takes a while to get moving. I don't know why that is. It's probably how we're wired, but not everybody wakes up the same. Jesus is in the middle of a very long monologue. He's sitting on the Mount of Olives, and he's with four of his disciples, and he's alluded to the destruction of the temple. And his disciples are asking him for some more specifics. Like, can you tell us what the signs will be for this destruction? Because we'd like to be ready, because that sounds awful. And then Jesus kind of goes into um, all these things, these signs, what it will look like. And then he has these reminders that we hear today of, well, just like stay awake and keep alert and you'll be fine as long as you stay awake. Well, we know that that's metaphorical in a sense because, of course, no one can stay awake all the time. We, our bodies need sleep. We have to fall asleep. But there's something about a constant readiness, a constant um, wakefulness that Jesus is talking about. And it made me think about um, how we wake up and how that's just different for everyone and that that's okay. How we wake up can be very different. The point is that we keep waking up. That's the constancy, is that we keep up the waking up. And I thought about this because as I was thinking about sleep and waking up, when we need to pay attention, when we need to be very focused on something, it helps if we've had a good night's sleep. Lots of studies show this about kids in school, the more sleep they get, the better they are to be attentive. It also shows that if kids can go to school with a full uh, tummy, they're also more, like, more likely to stay focused and, and stay at attention, which is why a lot of public schools provide breakfast as well as lunch. These things help people focus food and sleep. It's not just that we can be focused because we want to be. Our bodies need to be um, in tune to help the attention happen. But specifically about sleep, and it's kind of this interesting both and, that if you want to be really focused, you have to sleep, which seems like it's at odds with what Jesus is saying, which is keep awake, stay alert, don't fall asleep. 
And yet the best way to stay alert and to keep awake and to be ready with attention is to have a good night's sleep. So what gives? What are we supposed to take from that? Well, maybe the fig tree analogy helps. Jesus said, well, from the fig tree, learn its lesson about how when um, the branches become tender and start to bud, that's when you know something's happening. Well, spring is here. Well, that's something that happens gradually. And you could say that trees also take a really long sleep. They, it, they look like they're asleep all winter, lying dormant, and then all of a sudden they wake up in the spring. So it's almost as if Jesus is saying, yeah, I know you're going to need sleep. The fig tree, perfect example. That thing sleeps for a long time. But even when it's sleeping, it's still getting ready to wake up and shoot forth leaves and grow fruit. So there is something really key about sleeping, about downtime, about being unfocused that helps us to then be focused and be ready and bear fruit like Jesus is saying. I think Advent is this invitation to change our focus intentionally towards Jesus, towards the gift he is and what he brings us, to change our attention towards why we need that gift, that self-reflection, that confession and forgiveness, to be aware that he brings salvation to those who need to be saved. He brings grace to sinners. He brings good news to people who have heard a lot of bad news. When we change our, fo our focus there, it's not that God loves us better. When we change our focus towards Christ and all that he does, it's not that we get even more grace or even more forgiveness. God doesn't need our attention. Jesus doesn't need our focus but we need to be focused on Jesus. We need to be focused back on God. Advent is an invitation to change our focus and change our attention in order that we're changed. And that's why I think it's helpful to think about it in the terms of keep waking up. We can't always be awake. We can't always have our attention. We have so many things going on. There are so many distractions. But can we have it on our mind to keep waking up? Keep trying. Keep opening the Bible. Keep watching worship videos. Keep trying the Faith Five. Keep going through that Advent devotional. Keep at it. That's that wakefulness, that awareness, that Faith is there, we have it, and like a muscle, it gets stronger when we use it. So we keep at it. God arrives today. God arrives each moment. And in Advent, we change our focus, not just to that first arrival. I know we talk about that a lot when Jesus arrives as a baby, Mother Mary, Dad Joseph, the donkey, Bethlehem, the whole nine yards. But Advent is also tuning our hearts and minds to what we expect will happen one day, that he comes back again. And that when we keep waking up to how God is with us in each day and each moment, when we keep waking up to all of that, that's how we're staying alert for that second arrival. And of course, we don't know when that will be, but when we keep waking up, to God's activity in our lives, we're just gonna be that much more ready to see it. I think a lot of times people can feel bad if they haven't been plugged into their faith or been plugged into church for a while. They can feel guilty about that if they've kind of let the habit of um, daily devotions or even going to church or watching these videos, they can feel bad if those habits have slid. And I just want to say there's no shame in that at all. God's not angry about that. I'm not angry about that. There's, there's no shame in being, being sleepy on your faith for a while. What's 
good is to keep waking up. That's what we can do. And it's helpful to know we don't have to get stuck in how long we were asleep or how long we were sleepy with our faith. Sometimes it's helpful to think about the reasons why we did that and maybe there's some good um, self-discovery there and some learning and some good reflection, but we don't have to get stuck there. The point is to keep waking up and you can always start again. You can always plug back into your faith. You can always plug back into church. There's no um, statute of limitations on that. It's always this invitation that we hear really loudly in Advent to plug back in, to turn our focus back to Jesus, the gift that he is, the gift that he gives. It's a free gift. It's for all. We have done nothing to earn it. And that's why we don't have to feel guilt or shame about being sleepy for a while. That's not where we want to dwell. Jesus wants us to wake up and to change our attention again, not because he needs it, but because we need it. We need to feel loved. And when we feel loved, we are so much more ready to be loving people in this world and to love others and to share God's love. Advent is an invitation to keep waking up, to plug into your faith, to turn our attention to the gift of Jesus Christ that comes to you and that comes to me and comes to all people. Amen. I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. And runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Lord, I need Oh, God, how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Good morning. I am coming to you from our narthex where it's starting to look a little bit like Christmas. Um, I wanted to talk to you today specifically about some giving opportunities, given that this is the season of giving. This is our hat and mitten tree here in our narthex. We invite you to bring in new hats, mittens, scarves, socks, underwear, all of these items to decorate our tree. These items will then be given to Operation Christmas, 
right here in Bolingbrook to support local families. So we hope that you will join in decorating our tree. The other giving opportunity I wanted to share with you is God's Global Barnyard or Good Gifts through the ELCA. Now, they have a whole catalog um, of items that you can choose to uh, purchase in honor of someone. Things like pigs, goats, bees, uh, solar powered lanterns, water filters. Don't worry, you don't have to wrap any of those items. You would just purchase online through the website that you see on the screen. And those gifts are given to families around the world to make a difference to, in ending hunger and poverty. So we invite you to consider uh, those types of gifts this year. I have one more giving opportunity that I want to share with you regarding our Diaper Depot. This is a ministry that New Life Church has been uh, running on a continual basis for well over a year now. And it provides prepackaged diapers and wipes to young families in our community. Now this pandemic has gone on longer than any of us would have liked, and it has certainly affected a lot of households. And so we have seen the need uh, for this ministry increase dramatically. Um, so we are happy to announce that we have received a matching grant from Thrivent Financial. Now this team action grant uh, is for up to $250. They are going to match any donations of products, be it wipes, diapers, pull-ups, um, or monetary donations as well. So if you would like to participate in this matching gift opportunity, uh, you could purchase any of those products. You can drop them off here uh, in our church office uh, or the Narthex. Now, if you would like to give via check, uh, you can simply make that out to New Life Church, uh, include Diaper Depot in the memo line, and that will all count towards this matching grant from Thrivent Financial. We are grateful uh, for this partnership and coming alongside to support our community, and we invite you to do the same. That's all I have for this week. See you next time. friends, Tom Pavolini here with this week's prayers. Dear God, we pray as we turn our attention toward the holiday season to fully enjoy it and, rem and remember why it's special. This is the time of year we get to hit the reset button on life, remembering what is important, that you sent your son to save us. And God, while I know a lot of the horrendicity of the past year isn't going to magically go away on December 25th or on January 1st, we do have something that is going to hopefully change things. The reminder that Jesus is with us and is on our side. So we pray that during these next four weeks, we can take some time to settle our minds and hearts and be reminded of yours and Jesus's love for all of us and how we can use that love to keep us patient and to show our love and friendliness to those around us. We know that many people's holidays will be turned upside down this year. We pray for you to comfort those who are missing loved ones this holiday season, whether it's because they've lost a loved one, have a loved one who's presently sick, or whether they will be without their loved ones because they're trying to stay safe. We pray for people to make good decisions on how to safely celebrate the holidays. We thank you for the countless blessings we've been given, 
and we thank you for the opportunity each year to refocus our attention on your love for us. Thank you, God. Amen. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread, and forgive our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive a benediction for your day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. This worship has ended. Our service to each other and our community continues. Go about your day and keep waking up. See you next time. is temporary. Keep praying, stay connected. You are loved and missed.